There are three popular ways to make a perfect snow buoy, but some people are still having issues when creating them. I did some research and testing, and in this video, I want to show you the mistakes to avoid, and we're getting started right now. Hey guys, what's up? It's Phil back with another Animal Crossing New Horizons episode. If you like Animal Crossing game tips, guides, and all other gaming related stuff, then be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of people still struggling to make a perfect snow. Now I've seen a lot of great guides out there that show people how to do it. Unfortunately, people are still struggling and I wanted to shed some light on the subject. So with all that being said, let's take a look at the three different ways to make a perfect snow boy. Now the first method that we're going to talk about is the eye ear method. And this method, you basically use the top of your eyes to measure one snowball and the bottom of your ears to measure the second snowball. And this is the first method that I've seen kind of in the community uh, in the past couple of days. It was the first one that kind of came came around and so we all started making snow boys uh, using this method and I actually created a video on this a couple of days ago and I think it helped a lot of people but I do find that this one is probably the hardest one to do because when you're trying to measure with the camera and trying to get the measurements just right on each snowball it can be really easy to get the measurements off and and with creating the perfect snow boy you have to be within a 10% range in order to get this to work uh, correctly so uh, you know it, and it's time consuming because if the snowballs go uh, too big or what have you then you have to you know restart or maybe push one of the snowballs over a pathway to get it to shrink and it just takes a lot of time so I did a poll with my viewers and this was actually the most popular method that most people were using and uh, to create the perfect snow boy but but like I said before, I mean, in my opinion, I think it's the hardest due to how difficult it can be to measure the snowballs, especially if you're playing on a smaller switch screen. Now, the biggest mistakes I see with the eye and ear method is that it's so easy to get the measurements off when you're trying to measure with a character that's kind of wobbling, moving to the music. And if you've got a really, you know, if you're using your Nintendo Switch screen, it's very difficult to kind of see, you know, to kind of get that measurement right. And so a lot of people will get the measurements slightly off and you do have to be within a 10% window when you combine the two snowballs together. Hey guys, leave me a comment below and let me know which one of these methods that you're using and let me know some tips and tricks that you use to make sure that you get the perfect snowboy. Now the second method that I wanted to show you guys is the 1710 method. It's sometimes referred to as the 1712 and, and basically what you do is you push the first snowball around for 17 seconds and then the second snowball would be for 10 seconds and then with the 1712 method obviously the second snowball would be for 12 seconds and I've seen a lot of people say that they would use a timer on their phone or maybe they would count one Mississippi, two Mississippi and so on all the way to 17 and, and 10 respectively. Um, and I've had a few people claim that this method works 100% for them every single time. But I have found that when I'm doing this method, it can be a little tedious to get your stopwatch out or to try to keep the right counting rhythm in your, in your head. Uh, but with a little bit of practice, I'm sure everything would work out with this method. And it is my, my second favorite method to use. It's, it's definitely more promising than the first, in my opinion. And so one of the biggest mistakes with the 1710 or the 1712 method is that it can be a little tedious to get your stopwatch out and get that time just right. And it can also be a little difficult if you're, you know, with, without practice uh, to get your timing down right if you're counting it in your head. Now with this particular method, something that you'll notice is that the snowboys are going to be a little bit smaller, but that's okay. As long as the head is 80 to 90% the size of the body, everything will work out just fine. The rating system is not necessarily for the uh, size of the snowboy itself, but as long as the head is proportionate to the, to the body. Now here's a really cool tip that I wanted to share with you. No matter which method that you decide to use, Whenever you push the two snowballs together and you find out that it's not the perfect snowboy, and you'll know just as soon as you push the two snowballs together, the snowman will speak to you and he'll make it pretty clear on whether or not he is a perfect snowboy. He'll either say that I'm a perfect snowboy or he'll say something like, oh, so close, I was almost a perfect snow person. Uh, you can actually kill the game, uh, hit the home button, 
and then press X on your controller to kill the game and then reload the game just go right back into it and your snowballs will respawn and you won't lose the opportunity to get one of the large snowflake DIY recipes. The next method is called the 10 space method and this method is actually my favorite because it honestly it takes out all the thinking involved. And the way this method works for those that don't know is that you roll each snowball to the maximum size and you put a 10 space pathway between the two snowballs. Then you push one snowball to the other over the pathway. And as you go across the pathway with the snowball, it shrinks and it ends up being the perfect size when it's combined with the other snowball at the other end. Now for me, this method works 100% of the time, but I have seen people complaining that it's not working for them. So I started doing some testing and research and I figured out what they're doing incorrectly. And I actually saw this when I was doing my testing. When you're doing this method, be sure to leave an extra space between the end of the path and the snowball. Many people were putting the snowball too close to the path and it was causing the other snowball to not have enough room to shrink as it was pushed across the pathway. Now to kind of give you an example and show you what I'm talking about, I've made sure that both of the snowballs are the maximum size and then I put one of the snowballs on the very edge of the path and push them together and as you can see it actually uh, did not create the perfect snowboy and so I believe that's the biggest mistake that I wanted to point out and make sure that you guys don't make that mistake as well. So one of the things that I've been incorporating into the 10 space method is actually adding an 11th uh, spot to the pathway and using it as a guide or, or a reference point and making sure that the snowball is sitting kind of in front of the 11th spot and then when you push the other snowball down the pathway uh, just keep it on the side where it's, it's still 10 spaces and it, it has worked for me every single time and then once you're done making the perfect snowboy take a look at this series that I have all about villagers that will show you how to add or remove any villager that you want and I've also got a guide on the best way to time travel so take a look at that too and if you're new here then don't forget to subscribe